Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? No, this video isn't being uploaded late. If you look up the top left of the screen, you can see exactly what time I'm filming this video. I slept in. I haven't slept in like this in probably better than a year and a half. Um, usually I'm too uncomfortable, um, too much pain. You just after a while, you're just, your body's like, hey, you got to move. So, um, Yes, the Lord granted me rest, and I was able to sleep. Whoever prayed for that, thank you. All of you who prayed for that, thank you. That was amazing. I have not slept like this in ages. Oh, excuse me. He really does answer prayer, and I really do appreciate y'all's prayers for me. Um, hopefully, because a lot of you contacted me about the uh, video, uh, hopefully you guys are you're watching it, paying close attention to what's being said, and then researching it on your own. In that email that I sent you, I provided a link to a website that better explains the connection, but you know, and some of that stuff. Um, but definitely do your own research. That way, and this is the same conversation I had with my daughter about the same subject. That way we go into this well armed with the full amount of information we can have. Because I don't think we've seen the full effect of what's going to happen here. And I think that by the time a lot of people are able to even get access to this, it, it, they may not want it just for the simple fact of what's going to develop from this. I think for some reason, I think for some reason there, there's some, there's some much deeper sinister scheme going on with these, even more than what we think based on what we have seen. There may be something much, much worse underlying here. And uh, I fear for those who took that. I fear for those who, who have engaged in that. And I really hope that the Lord has mercy on those who did it unknowingly, uh, which I, I know he will, or did it unwittingly. It's scary times we live in. It's, um, it, it's a scary time because we're at the point where we don't know who we can trust. We don't know what we can trust. The, the lies are so blatantly obvious coming from our government, coming from our officials, coming from everywhere, that you don't know what's real and what isn't. You don't know what is true and what isn't. To me, that's the most, I, the greatest identifier that would make you go, well, where can I find truth? First of all, it establishes the fact that you have the desire for truth. I, why can't I find just real truth? Then you start to search. And, and if you're godly, if you're even with God, if you're saved, your search is going to bring you to this word. It's the only truth that has never changed. Now, man tries to change it. But amazingly enough, when you read the, the versions, even though there's stuff missing, the story, the message still comes through. God knows what he's doing. And he has poured blessings out us on us, unreal level of blessings. We're going to pray Psalm 20 this morning. I, I was given several other things, but none of them really manifested in anything that would be beneficial or shareable. The only one would have been uh, the one about um, uh, serving God and following Christ. It's hard, but I may save that for a regular video so we can dig deep into the scriptures. Excuse me. But um, we're going we're gonna to sing praises of blessing this morning. And this psalm is about blessing, the assurance of God's saving work. It's just, it's full of blessing. Excuse me. Oof. I would say it's too early in the morning, but it's not. It's too early in the almost afternoon. Um, no matter what we endure, there's blessing. No matter what, how much pain we go through, there's blessing. No matter what happens, there's blessing. We always tend to look at the exterior and, and look at the suffering and look at the pain and we fail when we look at that wrapper. We fail to see the blessing on the other side. The blessing that's within within the wrapper, within the, the life. We get so distracted by uh, the troubles and, 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 the, and the upsets and the tears and the constant, constant struggle that we fail to see the blessing that's within that. And therefore, we fail to see where it's coming from, or I should say who it's coming from. There's blessings in everything. Even the most horrible, horrible events. There, there's blessing contained within there. 
people have been, you know, in a boat sinking or a plane crash have been in dire straits, about to die, and have found the Lord in those moments. There was a blessing within that moment. Some of the stuff we see is such the most horrible disasters in those moments. There are blessings hidden with that moment. One of the most horrible, we've seen a lot of horrible things the last few years. One of the most horrible was just a few years ago. And it was in somewhere in, somewhere in China or Japan. And a, a tank, I don't know if it was a truck, I think it was a truck that had a wreck. But it was a tank of this chlorine gas. Really powerful stuff. I forget the actual name of it. It's super powerful. And it burst. Well, this stuff is heavy, so it stays on the ground. But it spreads really fast. And there was a line of people down the hill in their cars. And they got out and started running. And when this white cloud enveloped them, it, it was instantaneous death. You barely even had to breathe any of it in. And it would immediately, instantaneously cease your existence. Now, we know that in, in China and in Japan, Christians are heavily persecuted, especially China. But that, when that cloud went down that hill, I mean, it, it, wow. It, I mean, you see people running and then that just collapsed instantaneously. And the, the video they have, the security camera footage, it's silent. That's what makes it even more terrifying. The blessing was the people they found in their cars, many of them they found that had ran and then were taken by the cloud, were clutching... King James Bibles in their hands. We're clutching New King James Bibles in their hands. We're clutching NIV Bibles in their hands. Not the Chinese versions where they change the words, but the actual ones, ones we send them. There was a blessing behind those things. There's a blessing behind every terrible thing we see, every horrible, monstrous disaster that happens. There's, there's always a blessing. But the disaster always seems to force or overshadow us seeing that. Now, as a Christian, and as we grow, especially when the Holy Spirit starts to teach us through sanctification, we start learning to look for those blessings. We see the terrible event, and then we start to pay a little closer attention. Wait a minute. Where's the blessing in this? That's trained eyes. That's eyes that have been opened to those things. You can't see them unless he opens your eyes to them. We can't even get saved unless he opens our heart to receive it. The Bible says that. Some of us had our hearts open in very terrible circumstances. But there was a blessing in that circumstance. We get so distracted and so focused on the horrible, on the terrible, on the event, that we forget to look for the glorious blessing that God has put in that event. And therefore, never give thanks to him for those blessings. And he understands because he knows how we are. And he gets it worked out in one way or the other. And many of us, if we live long enough, and we learn to let go, come to that place where the Holy Spirit shows us, look at this. And then we give thanks to him for those things, for those blessings that we've forgotten. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ, the anointed one, our holy Lord and Savior, your wonderful, amazing, pure, perfect begotten son that you sent to die for us. A horrible, horrible scene that unfolded on this world. If we were, if we were alive to see it, no horror movie that's ever been made can rival the gore can rival the terribleness of the scene. And to the average onlooker, that's all they see. But to those of us you've opened our eyes, we see something deeper. We see the blessing hidden behind that. We see the triumph. We see the warrior winning the war behind that visual. And the amazing, incredible, just completely cannot be understand a blessing that you poured in behind that massage 
What we saw was in the physical realm, but what happened in the spiritual realm was so much more. And all men, those who died believing before and those who died believing after, those who were alive believing after, received the result of that blessing. Those who come to faith walk into that amazing blessing, and that is the perfect blessing of this free gift of salvation you offer to every man. Not every man responds, not every man accepts, not every man signs signs the contract, so to speak. Not every man sees the light, but the blessing is there nonetheless. Your word says that you make it rain on the just and the unjust. You bless everybody, and we, we scarcely give thanks for those blessings. We scarcely look past the disaster to see where the blessing is. Just recently, just just the last few years, a gunman went into the church here in Sutherland Springs, down from my house. Shot the place up, killed a lot of people, even even take to, killed a child and an unborn baby. That young man had severe problems. You dealt with him, but through a tragedy, in a no-name town in the middle of nowhere that has nothing in it. Literally nothing. There's one gas station. That's it. You don't even know it's a town if there wasn't a sign there. A community came together. A group of people were tested. And they grew. And a church now prospers. Just in the last few weeks... Amazing, amazing weather hit here in South Texas. Weather we don't have. To hear the news outlets, outlets talk, we're all dying down here. But you see it from our view and see how people are coming together as community, giving whatever they have to help. Stepping up and being there for those who need it. When your word says the love of many will grow cold, what we missed in that statement was that but the, those who still have love will shine like beacons of light. And we see that. I see that. They don't tell people about that the rest of the world. But we see that here. And it is amazing. Father, we give thanks for your word that tells us these things. But we also, right along with that, Holding hands, we give thanks for giving us eyes to see these things. For the Holy Spirit sanctifying us to the point that at, at some point, every believer gets the eyes to see the blessings behind the disaster. That at a certain point, a believer has no disasters in their life. They're merely opportunities for blessing. They're merely opportunities and, and events for testing and growing and strengthening. They're not disasters that stop the world. They're disasters that change our perception of the world. Giving us new insights into ourselves and into others. Exposing lies for what they are. Exposing those who are really our friends and are, and are not our friends. Exposing truth. These are blessings from you. Amen and thank you, Father. A terrible travesty has happened. The president that was supposed to win, that did win, when we look at the actual numbers, was booted out of office. And another person stepped in and is, well, I don't want to speak negatively of dignitaries, but we know what he is. We can see it. You are exposing everything. I have yet to see one promise that he's made that he's fulfilled, yet the one before him fulfilled every promise he made times ten. Yet even in this disaster, yet even in, in what we see happening, how they can't even get around each other, they keep stumbling over each other's feet, you are pouring out blessings. And it's awesome to see. Sometimes it's hard to see, but it's awesome to see. It's amazing to see. We scarcely understand what true blessing is. We scarcely understand how you work with these blessings. 
but it is it's a moment to give thanks it's a moment to give praise when we start to learn how to see these things and witness these things because then joy comes we see something amazing and then give you great give you uh, glory for it and that's what we should be doing so father we give glory this morning we give you praise this morning we praise you for opening our eyes to the truth we praise you for showing us the truth we praise you for exposing heresies and lies and, and deceit for what it is, exposing evil agendas right out there in the open for us to see. There's nothing hiding them anymore. They're not even attempting to. We thank you for opening our eyes. We thank you for the Holy Spirit to teaching us and sanctifying us and growing us and building us up into this holy faith, this faith that allows us to witness everything. So there is no excuse. There is no saying, I didn't know. We see it. And it is amazing. Thank you, Father. Thank you for opening our eyes to the true gospel. Opening our eyes to what the cross really means. Opening our eyes to what really happened and what's really coming. Opening our eyes to the clear face value interpretation of your word and the deeper meanings within your word. Things that help us grow continually there's never an end of the wonderful mysteries hidden within your word and when one is found it is glorious thank you father thank you for this amazing grace thank you for you because the world tells us this is who god is but when we come to you we learn who you really are i thank you for you because you are love you don't love, you are love. That should cause people to stop and think. Because if we look at the things that, that you do, things that are attributed to you, look at the things that happen according to your will. If we know that you are love, that changes our perception of those things. That changes what we really see. Though we see this on the outside, there's something, there's something underneath. There's a much more glorious emotion driving that event. This morning, Father, I'd like to pray Psalm 20, the assurance of God's saving work. And in this psalm, it is full of blessings. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice, Selah. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. We will rejoice in your salvation. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of our Lord, our God. They have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stand upright. Save, Lord. May the King answer us when we call. Amazing. Full of blessing. Full of the glory of God, of your glory. Singing your praises. Speaking of your works. Just about a perfect psalm. May we do even half as good at telling the world about you. Now, in this world, it's hard. Like the subject we were talking about earlier, we were getting into earlier, before I started this. It's hard to serve God. It's hard to serve you. It's hard to follow you, Lord. But it is a work I could never turn away from. Even if it's hard, it's worth it because... We're working for something. We're working towards something. In this life, what we work towards is nothing. When we die, it all goes to everyone else. We've, we've done nothing in our life just living this life. Working and working and working for nothing. I know people that spend their whole lives up until they're 50 and 60 and even 70 
And they dedicate every waking moment to working, trying to become rich, trying to achieve some goal. And they get to that point and they finally just achieve that goal. And they sit down and think I've wasted my whole life because now I've only got a few years left and then I'm gone and I have no time to enjoy the goal I've achieved. This is where the, the wonderful blessing of being poor, of being lower class comes in because you don't strive for the riches and the glory and the fame. You live and enjoy every day as it comes. And the amount of joy you have is astounding because your focus isn't on worldly things, it's on godly things, especially if you're a Christian, it's on godly things. And you have a whole life full of wonderful memories and of peace and of time well spent, not wasted, on pursuits that don't help. I know very few people who have built entire fortunes and dedicated their whole lives to it just to leave it to their kids and be a blessing to them. And it ruins the next three generations because of all the money. It just turns them into worthless beings. I would rather not have anything. And I've told both my parents this. I would rather not have any inheritance from you. I would just, I want to have a good relationship with you in a world where most people don't. Fortunately, money became too big a factor in some of that. So my situation went a different way, but it's okay. Because God is omnipotent. Father, you are on your throne. You run things. You declare things. You control things. And it is your will that is done all day, every day. Regardless of what man thinks and says. Your will is done. As a present participle, your will is done. In your Bible, you speak in the presence. I like that. Your name is I am. Not I was. Not I will be. I am. And that's a hard, it's hard to learn the message you have hidden within that statement. But once we start to grasp it, it changes our view. Because as you started to show me, I figured out I need not look to the future. I need not look to the past. I need to look to right now. And the peace that has just been poured out on my life is awesome. Father, help us to be living for right now. Live for today. Take each day as it comes. We go to bed at night, that's the end. And we wake up in the morning, it's a brand new beginning. It's something new to behold. It's something new, some new adventure. And to enjoy everything as it comes. Because the peace that comes from that is uncountable. It's unregisterable. Unregister Father, thank you for these things. Thank you for th these many, many blessings you pour out on us. The blessings we forget to give thanks about. Blessings we don't recognize. I know you see it. When you pour out blessings on, on someone and, and then they don't see it and don't give thanks. Well, we give thanks. We thank you for showing us this level of love and even showing the unbeliever this level of love. The blessings you pour out on him pour, spread over to us. The blessings you pour on us spread over to him. You bless everyone. And it's awesome to see. That's why we love even those who don't love us and pray for them. Because when they see the light, what a glorious day. What a glorious day it is and what amazing shouting and celebration there is in heaven. Bless you, Father. We praise you and we glorify you and we thank you. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace, and your peace and for this perfect salvation. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for morning prayer. We are so surrounded by blessings. If we were to really step back and take a look and count 
Blessings versus disasters. Blessings versus troubles. You would realize that the blessings are likened to the deep end of the swimming pool. The 11, the 11 foot deep end. And the troubles, when you're really honest with yourself, the troubles, they're back at the shallow end, but you're not in the shallow end. You're sitting on the edge in the puddle of water on the, on the edge of it. When you look at the balance from carnal eyes, you, you see a life full of troubles and, a, and just a few blessings. But through spiritual eyes, that, sway, that scale flips the other direction. He pours blessings out on us like we wouldn't believe and we fairly we barely understand. But taking the time to look a little deeper in his word, taking a time to look a little more closely, you start to see the amazing hidden blessings in everything God does because it's all through his Bible. Take the time to look a little closer. In this, especially in this day and age, and what we're seeing now, and look a little closer at just how much God is working when it seems like he's distant. So many people are talking about how distant God is. He's not. He's right here. He is very closely monitoring what is happening because the most terrible, the greatest and most terrible time to ever hit this earth is about to unfold. God's not indifferent. God, God is very focused on what's happening right now. He always has been. Because in a lot of cases, God speaks. But in a lot of cases, maybe even a lot more, he just sits silently and watches. Watches to see what we'll do. And when we see the truth and we act on it, when we turn to righteousness, all he has to do is just open the valve and turn out more blessings. And the closer you draw to him and the more you draw to him, the more active he is in your life. It is awesome to witness. I know I'm witnessing it. I bless you all. I pray God pours out blessings on you. I pray he opens your eyes the way he has mine even more to see more, to understand more, to, to witness more. I pray he gives you the sense to know just how much love he has for you and what he's doing for you and, and where he's leading you so that you can serve him and how to serve him. I pray he opens this word up to you like you've never seen before. And I pray in Jesus' name, blessings beyond measure. I love you guys. I bless you all. And I will see you in the next one.